Hello, and thank you all for joining us to this webinar on AVID's new audio interface called Carbon. This is brought to you by AES Scotland in association with AVID Technology. So a big and warm welcome to all AES members and hopefully some new ones as well. I'm Eric Joseph, I sit on the AES Scotland committee and on demonstration duties this evening will be Simon Sherborne. Now, Simon is AVID's Pro Audio Solutions Specialist, and what he doesn't know about this technology isn't worth knowing. So enough of me, and over to you, Simon. Hello, thank you, Eric. Can you guys hear me? Give me the thumbs up. Good, good. That's awesome. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Eric. And... Um, Thanks for having me. Um, so what we thought we would do this evening is I've actually, um, earlier on today, I captured the sort of main part of my presentation that I wanted to uh, give to you guys, uh, which is about 30 odd minutes. Um, just wanted to make sure it was all running smooth and get all the technology working. Um, so I thought what we'll do is we'll, I'm gonna run that. Um, and then that gives us a good, um, up to an hour really of, of uh, Q&A and questions and you know chat I'm just happy to talk about anything and show you anything um, got a system running here um, so yeah I think that's what we'll do what I will say just on that on a bit of housekeeping would be that um, I'd suggest once I start sharing the screen if you use um, gallery view in the um, uh, speak of you and then you can see both me and Eric at the same time when we're talking and also if you switch to hide non-video participants then um, anyone who's not got their camera on will disappear off the screen and you'll get full screen uh, video. Um, so um, the other thing is yeah if you've got questions uh, please do drop them into the Q&A um, uh, section uh, at the bottom of the screen there's, there's Q&A um, I'm going to keep an eye on that while we're running the presentation. And I, if there's any specific questions, I will answer them. Uh, but hopefully we can queue up a few questions for afterwards that I can um, talk about a bit more, a bit more widely. Um, so, OK, I um, in the in my presentation, I, I thanked Eric and I thanked Stuart from the AES. Um, I didn't thank Sue and Neil, who I didn't know were going to be here and uh, looking after us. So thank you to you guys. Um, right. Let me share my screen again. Okay, let's go. Hello, good evening. Hi, thank you for having me. So I just wanted to say thank you to Stuart and to Eric Joseph um, for organizing this and for inviting me along. Um, my name is Simon Sherborne. I am product specialist for Pro Audio at uh, Avid in the UK. Uh, this is my home studio where I've been working for the last year. Um, this is actually the synth corner, as we like to call it in the, here. Um, and this is where I have basically been broadcasting to the world, um, whereas normally I would be uh, up there um, visiting you guys, having a drink um, and um, chatting. Um, but we'd like to try and think of these kind of events as, as social. So uh, grab a drink and a snack. Um, and I hope this is going to be interesting. So what we're going to be talking about this evening is uh, Pro Tools Carbon. This is the newest member of the Pro Tools family. Um, it's a 
product in itself, but we're also going to be talking about the technology behind it, which is the hybrid DSP engine, um, because that's also going to be coming to the HDX platform as well, which many of you probably have used and or are using now. Um, so yeah, it's a different way of using Pro Tools. It lets you get a whole load more out of the stuff that you already have. So um, it's, it's quite an exciting time. Um, I am going to show you the picture there. Um, yeah, so you already saw in the little video, just an overview of the actual hardware itself. Um, so we'll, we'll look at that. We'll look at what the product is and what it has on it. And then we'll get into it more detail about why it's unique and what the workflow offers that nothing else um, that I've found so far can do. And then I'll show you some stuff in here. With some, um, I'm going to run some synths through, some guitar, um, just to try and demonstrate what I am explaining here so it's not all too dry and technical. Um, so the carbon itself was designed with particular users in mind, uh, in particular kind of recording musicians, um, project studios, recording studios that are recording bands um, up to a certain scale, um, studios that were running maybe older Pro Tools technology. Um, this is a kind of really simple and compact way to kind of get up to date um, with um, the new uh, platform. And yeah, it's, it's kind of, fills a nice gap between, you know, sort of Pro Tools software, native type platform, and then the flagship kind of HDX scalable systems. Um, so that's kind of who we are making it for, you know, and it's really, you know, Pro Tools has always been DSP based platform. Um, you know, like, if you're like me, you've kind of always worked with Pro Tools and you're just used to that way of working on a hardware accelerated system with all your signals coming through essentially a digital mixer that's Kind of being controlled by the computer but um, you know obviously now it's very common to have native systems most audio interfaces are running usb or thunderbolt um, and we just kind of got used to the latency and the kind of fiddling around you have to do to get around the issues of running through a computer carbon is essentially designed and the htx um, hybrid engine is designed to essentially just take care of all that stuff for you in the background so that you can get on with recording, you can record bands, you can record yourself and monitoring becomes just kind of instantaneous and transparent. Um, obviously it's got DSP processing power for plugins in there as well. Um, less important these days, obviously with fast computers, but it's there. Um, and it, you know, and in particular, we don't tie you to those DSPs. So all of the plugins, all of the Avid plugins, all of the third party DSP plugins run natively or DSP. Um, but we'll come back to that. So on the box itself, um, it's got 24 inputs, so eight channels of really nice kind of analog inputs, which can be uh, line, mic, instrument, um, switchable. Um, you've got those both on kind of uh, combo jacks, and then you've also got them on a DB25 breakout. So you can actually connect both of those up just for convenience. And then the combo jacks will override the, the DB25s. You've also got um, a comprehensive monitoring system built in. Um, so we've got these um, uh, headphone jacks down on the um, front of the unit uh, with four independent QMix feeds that you can send there. It's also got front panel monitoring control. It's got talk back. Um, so the other thing that's interesting about this box that you may have seen is that we are connecting it to your computer via ethernet. Um, so this is it's sort of important to know what this is doing. We're using the connection using the AVB technology, which is something that we've used at Avid on all the live sound consoles um, and the S3 actually. Um, it's a you know, um, nicely customizable ethernet based connectivity system, which you can use for streaming audio. Um, we're actually, rather than using it as a kind of network audio solution, you know, like Dante, we're actually using that as our direct connection between the carbon box and the computer. Um, it essentially replaces what, you know, would have been a Thunderbolt connection or a, with a much cheaper, easy to get hold of and longer potential cable run. Um, 
and you know we can also use it to run audio from the uh, the Mac as well. Um, so it's 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 quite nice that we can multi stream multiple applications to the Carbon, and it also means that we can customize it. So rather than just running audio back and forth on that cable, we're actually using it like a kind of Thunderbolt connection that we're connecting Pro Tools with the hardware. We can make the hardware part of the mixer and run 32-bit floating point audio back and forward um, between Pro Tools in the box and control signals as well. We can control the box um, over that ethernet connection. Um, uh, yeah, just to do sort of a bundle. Obviously, if you get Carbon, you get Pro Tools software subscription for a year. You get all of the plugins that Avid makes um, as part of that package and then some third party um, plugins, um, some DSP plugins from BX, uh, from DSP, um, um, and also some stuff from Arturia, nice reverb. And you also get um, a trial of the Auto-Tune DSP for real-time Auto-Tune. Um, just some specs there. Um, it's actually a really high spec box. Um, sounds amazing on the analog inputs. It also has this interesting variable Z um, technology on four of the inputs, so you can change the impedance and match with mics and uh, instruments, which is nice. Um, not going to get into that too much this evening, um, actually. Uh, we've got some videos about that stuff. Monitoring, obviously, is quite a big, important uh, part of the box, as well as the same with the put and talk back and the mic um, on the front here, and then the headphone outputs. Really useful just to kind of have an all in one solution in the One U box. So, I'm you probably noticed I'm rushing through talking about specs and connections, you know, that stuff's interesting, but really, the kind of real thing to be talking about is the workflow in this hybrid DSP. Um, system. Um, so what are we talking about here? Pro Tools HDX, you know, our primary current generation of, of high-end audio recording solutions, you know, what that does that's different to everything else is it runs your project on the cards, on the DSP chips. And that's how Pro Tools has always been. That's why Pro Tools is in every recording studio. It's because, you know, you plug a band in, they can hear themselves, they can have cue mixes, there's no latency um, and it kind of gets out of the way. It's kind of like having a console. Um, and then obviously, you know, there's the native solutions that work slightly differently and come through the computer. What Carbon does is essentially both of those things um, and it can do both of them at the same time. Uh, and that's what also HDX is gonna be able to do. Um, come later on this year. So what do we mean by that? So basically what I mean is that audio is, can come into this box. It can go through plugins. It can go through your mixer, your Pro Tools mixer and rerouted through your project and come straight back out again to your headphones. And it can do that with uh, like a millisecond or less latency. Um, you know, and to put that in perspective, sound travels through the air about one foot per millisecond. Um, you know, so a millisecond of latency is basically like standing one foot away from your amp. Um, and, you know, I always like to say that if you're a drummer and you've got a close mic snare, you hit that snare, that signal potentially could be getting back to your headphones through the carbon before it's getting to you through the air. Um, so we are really literally talking zero latency. Um, we can go through plugins. Um, and we, the, the nice thing is we're not going through a mixer. We're not going through some kind of low latency monitoring mode. Um, we're not going through a, another layer of software mixing. Um, it's just Pro Tools. Um, the nice thing about that is, you know, these low latency monitoring, you know, it's something that Pro Tools can do with an USB audio interface, if it has some kind of control for that on it. But there are limitations, you've got to manage it. You can't set up multiple headphone mixes in that scenario. So just to belabor the point, that's kind of what we're talking about here. Um, right, in fact, it's probably gonna be easier for me to show you this. Um, I've got this slide queued up, um, which will come into um, what I talk about when I'm show you in, showing you it in Pro Tools. So. 
I'm going to share my screen with you. This is, so this is my carbon, as you can see, um, I've got in my rack here. Um, and actually I've also got, um, probably, if you can see behind me, let me just switch back to my camera, but just behind me on the shelf here, I've actually got a Ferrofish ADAC converter as well. So I'm actually feeding the carbon from some ADAC connections over a fiber optic cable, which is where some of my synths are coming in. And then I'm using the kind of nice analog converters on the box to plug in um, a guitar, a mic, and also some of the analog synths I've got behind me are coming in direct as well. Um, so that's what I've got on the box here. And just to show you here on the front, I can control all of that stuff. I can control stuff in Pro Tools as well. Um, but I, you, you can probably see, I can select through my different inputs just by pushing and turning this knob. And then it, just here, it's going to, you can see it's telling me what each channel is set to. So for example, channel one is set to mic, channel two is set to line, channels three and four are linked as stereo. Um, so I can control those there. I can also switch my metering here and I got control of my main speaker levels here. I'm gonna mute that and I've got a headphone level there for my main headphone output. And then some programmable buttons as well. And then this is a little talkback uh, button here if I wanna talk into this mic here. Uh, one thing actually while I'm on this screen uh, is I have a guitar cable here. If I plug that in, um, let's just go back to channel one. If I plug that in here, you'll see that it automatically switches over to the instrument level input um, for listening to my guitar. I'll leave that plugged in so you can see that coming in when I go into Pro Tools. Okay, so what we're looking at here inside Pro Tools is my mix template for this studio uh, here. So I have got mixer inputs uh, for all of the things in here, my synths, uh, guitar bass, uh, my machiner. And it's just a simple, like a line mix that I use when I'm jamming in here um, so I can hear everything. Um, I used to use a hardware mixer to do this um, uh, with a USB interface into Pro Tools with all of the kind of latency and low latency management issues that I was talking about before. Now I've kind of really refined my setup here so I can just run everything into Pro Tools and I can record it whenever I want and just drop in. I'm using Ableton Link to sync everything up. It's, it's just brilliant. I love it. Um, so what you can see is this is my mixer and it's running completely natively um, currently. And so those of you who um, know Pro Tools will see that there's a new button here. Now this is my DSP mode button, which switches the tracks track by track between native and DSP modes. Um, and I can click that button to change them. But I've also got Pro Tools set up to automatically do that if I input monitor or record enable a track. Um, just to assume that I'm going to want to do that if I want to listen to something. Um, so let's do that. Let's uh, record on my guitar track. And you'll see that Pro Tools will just um, quickly change the signal path for this channel into DSP. And this has gone green. Um, you'll see that the plugins have gone green because these plugins are now running in DSP mode. Um, so let's just make sure there's some sound coming in first, some headphones. I hope you can hear this. So there you go, and you'll have to take my word for it. There is no latency there, it's just like playing into an amp, it's, it's really nice it's, it's you know there's none of that sort of spongy weird feeling of of latency and the nice thing is i'm in pro tools and i'm going through my regular plugins um and a bit of compression i can play with this i can go go metal if we want So we got all that going on. We got 
uh, th this plugin and the 11 rack plugin comes with the package, um, runs in VSP modes. Okay, let's come out and record arm. So let's pop this down. You probably also noticed that um, there's a reverb send I've got on all these channels. Um, and in fact, this reverb here is running Revive, which is um, a DSP enabled plugin. Um, so that channel, the reverb return channel also switched to DSP mode. Um, so the system will look downstream of the signal path and try and move everything into DSP modes um, to keep the low latency. Um, you don't have to do that um, with sends, you know, so like a reverb or a delay plugin, um, you know, it's not time critical, it's probably got pre-delay anyway, so you could use a non-DSP powered reverb, you know, currently I've got um, all these Avid ones that are DSP powered, but if I wanted to use something like the native Arturo ones that are really nice, um, I can actually um, force DSP mode off on this channel. You can see it's a darker green here, which is saying that it's automatically switched into DSP mode. If I just come on and click that, it will kind of switch it off. And then I'm able to switch to a um, different reverb. And that signal path is still open. It's just that it's running, that part of the signal path is running native. So we'll have a small amount of latency on it. Um, so there is a kind of trick that I have for showing the latency um, in a way that you can actually hear it, um, which is to use a click track. So I've got a click track in here, which is my standard Pro Tools one. Let's just, um, got a bunch of stuff in this session still. Let's just delete that. So that's my click from Pro Tools. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sync up to my machiner, drum machine, and play the inbuilt click on that. Um, now I know that Pro Tools and the drum machine are going to be in sync because I'm using Ableton Link over Wi-Fi to hook, sync them up. So switch that on. That's going to over that connection that will keep them in sync. But my signal path coming back from the machiner to hear that click is coming through Pro Tools through the carbon. So that is going to potentially be an issue. So it's not just about mics and guitars. Um, it can also be about hardware sequences that need to stay in time. So let's try this. If I hit play. So you probably can't hear that there's two clicks there. That's Machina, that's Pro Tools. Okay, now let me switch off the DSP mode. So I've currently got Pro Tools set to 512 sample buffer. That is the latency that's coming through. Let me stop them both. So that, you know, basically just goes to show we could, you know, with me, if I use MIDI clock instead of Ableton Link, I could set an offset um, and get them in sync, you know, that's going to change if I change the buffer. Um, you know, maybe I could actually make that latency a lot lower if I had a lot lower buffer. I certainly can't get as low as coming through carbon, but I could still get it low. But then when I start using a bit more native processing power and push my buffer up, I can't escape that latency. So that's really, um, the, the whole point is really that you're not having to think about these things um, and kind of kill the flow of when you're trying to make music. Okay, um, so that's this session. I'm going to kind of fast forward and open up a different kind of session. So more of a traditional um, uh, tracking type session um, so that you can see kind of how far we can push the system. Uh, let's uh, do that. So while that is loading, I'm going to show you this in kind of a different way of describing it. So here's a session that we've got with um, a few guitars. And I'm going to open this session and show you it as well in a, in a short while. 
So again, it's a session that's running natively, and this is one that's further down the line and the mix has been uh, done. There's more tracks, it's been overdubbing, um, and we're using native processing, got the buffer up, and then somebody wants to do some overdubs, either, you know, guitars, vocals, what have you. Um, not a problem. So here, what would happen is you could switch the track that you want to overdub into DSP mode. And then what Pro Tools is doing is it's pulling out that signal path, making it DSP, keeping it all on the hardware, um, keeping it low latency. Everything else is still running natively. And then it's all lined up and comes back out the outputs together and gets summed again. Um, completely invisible to you. Um, completely delay compensated. Um, so you're playing back against pre-recorded stuff that's running natively, but your monitoring path is low latency and what gets recorded is perfectly in time. So that's that. Let me switch back to Pro Tools. Okay, so this session is a template for tracking a band. Uh, you can see in the edit window, we've got all these tracks in blue for drum kit, uh, we've got pairs of guitar and bass tracks for DI and mic. Got some vocal tracks um, here. And then we've also got three different aux send groups here, which are feeding out to the headphones um, for each of those uh, things. And we've got a couple of reverb returns. Uh, we've got a listen back input. And then we've got a sort of monitoring control section here. Um, so you can see, so there's a click track, we've got talk back track. If I hold the talk back button, you'll see that it's picking up my voice, uh, currently sending it out of the one and three headphone outputs, which we've got master faders for here. Um, and so as well as every track being in uh, DSP mode, um, for the monitoring, there's also plugins on each track uh, running DSP. So we've got Smack and the BX console running on several. This is a nice addition to the Carbon Bundle, uh, this uh, Neve console emulation from Brainworks. Uh, some other compressors there. Um, we've also got the Purple Audio compressor on the vocal tracks, which is my favorite compressor. I've used it on everything. Um, some of the Avid reverbs, um, and then all of the headphone masters have got limiters on as well. Um, and so this session is just a good example of, you know, how far you could get with a fully DSP kind of tracking setup. Um, I'll show you the system usage here. So in this window, you can see what the DSPs are doing. Uh, so you can see seven of them are busy. Uh, there's a one free one, uh, combine, combining the mixer and DSP usage for plugins. So of course that doesn't mean that that is the scope of what you can do. Um, it's also, um, uh, you know, that's just what we're doing in DSP. So that the, the great thing about this is that we can build a bigger mixer as we want and a big overdub as much as we want. Um, use as many plugins as we like within the capacity of the native processing of the system um, and keeping the DSP uh, for when it's needed. And the same will be the case for HDX. So you know, for example, someone with a HDX one card, this is gonna really open up uh, what's possible in terms of the size of the project. Um, okay, that's one project that I want to show you. Now I'm gonna skip ahead Okay, so this project is right at the other end of the kind of workflow. It's a finished track uh, with lots of overdubs. Um, it's been mixed. It's got lots of sub mixing and routing um, going on and lots of processing. So uh, 
this one actually I'll just play it so you can hear what it sounds like <laughs> So there you go. So this track did have acoustic drums and then in a weird day that I was having a while ago, I decided to sound replace everything with Roland CR78 drum sounds. Anyway, um, so they're all folded into groups, um, bass, drums, guitars, uh, acoustic guitars, uh, some keys, uh, a lot of MIDI stuff that's been added in and some vocals and backing vocals. Um, and they all kind of are subgrouped together and then they come down to six final subgroups um, here and they, those are all submixed through a mix bus uh, before the vinyl master. And that's fine, this whole mix is running natively um, with the my laptop set to quite a high buffer, it's, it's able to process this mix. Um, but you know, kind of typical real world example is at this stage, somebody wants to overdub some vocals or some guitars. Um, and that is when you, you know, you're gonna hit a bit of a problem with a typical um, native bass system because you're not able to bring the buffer down to get to a comfortable monitoring latency. Uh, so this is where the DSP really helps. So let's look, this is my main guitar track. Let's put it into record. So Pro Tools is now going to switch that track to DSP mode. It's also going to do all the downstream stuff. Um, so yeah, my track is now DSP enabled along with the plugins um, inside that track. I've got a pedal and the BX Rock Rack again and channel strip. That's routing through the folder track master, which has got a compressor on it. Um, there's also the reverb and echo inside this mix group. And then further down, those guitars meet up with the acoustic guitars in this guitar bus here, and then through the final output. And all of those stages have been switched to DSP mode. Um, so it's actually really you know, quite a large chunk of my mixer chain is now running in DSP. And again, Pro Tools can handle that um, reasonably well with what it has because there's still a lot of the mixer that's running natively. There you go. So we can now go ahead and record, overdub, push it back to native if we need to. Um, so that's fantastic. Uh, one interesting thing here to note is that um, this session template is using good practice for DSP mixing, whether it's HDX or carbon, um, in that my mix bus is not kind of using the final master fader. Um, I know a lot of you probably do this already, but my mix bus is an aux and an, um, and an internal bus. So my final stage processing is on there. Now, actually those are reasonably low latency processes impact uh, bus compressor in the pro limiter is actually only adding 83 samples of latency um, to the signal path. But, um, you know, that's still a uh, couple of milliseconds. Um, and there are other processes, of course, like look ahead limiters and metering plugins that can uh, add processing delay even on DSP algorithms. Um, so it's generally good practice to work like this. So I could actually route any of my tracks straight out of the outputs or straight to any of the cues um, without going through this final stage kind of mix or mastering process um, and cost any delay uh, that, that costs you. Okay, well, I've spoken a lot. Um, so hopefully that has shown you all the key things that I wanted to show you about Pro Tools Carbon and the hybrid DSP engine. Um, so what I'm gonna do at this point is, is gonna end this section of the presentation. Um, 
and we'll switch over to answering some questions and having a chat and I can show you anything else that you want to see from myself here. Um, but I'll just take this chance to just say thank you again for having me and thank you to Stuart from the AES and Eric from Media's back. Okay, I'll talk to you in a moment. Hello, we're back in the room. So yeah, I hope that um, wasn't just too much of me talking. Um, although we did a pre-record, I didn't have time to take all my ums out. Um, so sorry about that. Yeah, um, we're basically opening the floor now. Uh, if anybody has anything that they would like to ask or anything else that you'd like to know, whether it's about carbon or anything else that's going on with all things uh, Pro Tools and Avid um, at the moment. Um, obviously, if we were doing this in person, like in the good old days, we would probably have a drink and some nibbles at this point. So don't be shy. Well, I'm not shy, Simon. Um, I, I think I should actually point out how much carbon costs. And it's around about the three and a half thousand pounds mark, and that includes VET. Um, I, I should add that it comes standard with a one year warranty, but that can be extended to three years upon registration within 90 days. Have I got that right, Simon? Sorry, I didn't catch that. I was reading Neil's question. Ah, oh, right. I was just saying that it comes standard with a one year warranty, which can be extended to three years with an offer on just now, but that is yeah. dependent upon registration within 90 days. Right. Okay. So over That's to you, Simon. Point. Um, well, actually, I, so Neil's actually asked a question, thanks, Neil, about what the realistic track limit is for carbon. Um, so, yeah, it's because carbon is hybrid, you know, essentially it's limit, the limit of what you can do with it is kind of a combination of both your machine and the DSP that's on board the carbon. Um, so, you know, with it should, you know, with a modern Mac, um, you know, I'm using a MacBook Pro. I've also got a Mac Mini here that I'd use, and it would comfortably run to the up to the maximum track count for Pro Tools software, which is 128 stereo tracks. Um, you know, or hundreds of tracks if you were running Pro Tools Ultimate software with it. Um, so that yeah, I guess the limitation is more you know in terms of how many plugins you might be able to run. Um, so we, you know, that that was one of the reasons I showed that session where we kind of tried to max things out, to show you how much plugins we could run on the DSP. But uh, obviously, in most situations, you would be running most of what you're doing in native, you know. So that DSP is really there just for live signals. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a difficult question to answer. Um, but yeah, the answer is, I guess, is whatever your computer could do plus some. Um, Matthew, thank you for asking a question. Um, so Matthew Gracie's asked um, about when the um, new um, DSP hybrid system is coming to HDX. Um, I think we're probably talking second half of this year uh, would be the safe bet. Um, so yeah, so then, you know, and you'll have a choice um, actually then. So you could run your HDX system uh, in the same way that you always have where the whole project is basically uh, you know encased on the on the uh, cards is running in hardware or you'll be able to run the hybrid mixer and um, and push things from there um, you know and, and again that's gonna, there's going to be some advantages of that you'll be able to you know it's going to open up things like the track count and um, especially you know if you're running a lot of native uh, plugins or virtual instruments um, the system can run a lot smoother uh, in this way because you know so much of the system of the mixer is running in the native side where your soft synths and your native plugins are. That there's a lot less need for Pro Tools to move signals back and forward to the hardware. Um, so all around, you know, I think it's going to be a good thing. Um, and yeah, the other thing actually, the, the thing that's made a big difference for me is that we, with Pro Tools HDX, you know, it is a hybrid system in the sense that you can run native plugins in HDX. Um, and you can, 
get yourself into trouble sometimes doing that. You know, if you're kind of combining DSP and native plugins in HDX, as I say, it's having to move signals around and you can find yourself adding latency and um, making the system work quite hard um, without realizing it. Whereas with the, the HDX um, uh, hybrid system, it will essentially let you choose on a track by track basis what is running where, and it actually makes the whole thing a lot easier to manage um, as a user. Um, so Stefan uh, has asked uh, what the major differences are between carbon and the future HDX. Um, in terms of how it works, there will it will be exactly the same. Um, obviously with HDX though, you will just have a lot more DSP resources um, available to you. Um, so yeah, in terms of how it works, it's the same. Um, HDX obviously runs uh, exclusively with Pro Tools Ultimate. So that, that is one smaller difference where you can choose with uh, Carbon. Um, okay, uh, that's great. Good questions. Thank you very much. Um, anything else? Yeah, anything else? Isn't, again, not necessarily have to be about carbon. We've got all kinds of things going on um, at the moment. So, And just back to the carbon thing again, yeah. Simon. Compatibility with Pro Tools. Um, I take it there's a particular version that is that has to conform. Um, do you know what that is? Yeah, it's, so it's it's basically, I think it started with 2020.12, was that, is that right? Or, no. I can't remember, it was of whatever the version was that came out at the end of last year. Oh, right, I think that's the last thing. On the exact dot release. But yeah, so you need the latest version, you need to be on um, uh, Mac. Uh, it, it's currently Mac only because uh, the AVB technology is it's kind of built into the Mac. Um, and it also needs to be Mac OS Catalina or, um, currently, um, again, because um, uh, of the AVB technology and updates they've put in um, to make that run smoothly. Um, just reading another question. Uh, so Matthew said, say more about carbon standard against carbon ultimate. Um, so carbon can be in the middle. Yeah, so um, the, what I was referring to was the version of Pro Tools that you're running with um, carbon. So, you know, as you know, you can buy Pro Tools in uh, a kind of standard software version, uh, which confusingly is just called Pro Tools. Um, and then there's the Pro Tools Ultimate version, which um, uh, traditionally comes with HDX um, and lets you run surround sound um, and ambisonics and it, you know, so it does the kind of pro mainly sort of video based um, features that that um, you don't get in the stereo version of pro tools um, so yeah carbon if you buy a carbon today it will come with regular pro tools um, for um, uh, on a subscription basis um, for a year but if you have a pro tools ultimate license or you want to run it with pro tools ultimate you can you can do that and that would essentially just unlock all of those kind of um, uh, more, gem mostly a surround sound features. Um, Chris has asked, uh, I'm not a Pro Tools user, but does this play nicely if you're running a Dante virtual sound card? Um, and can you run this on the new Apple M1 processor? Okay, I'll take that backwards. Um, no to the M1 currently, um, we're looking at, getting uh, Rosetta-based M1 support um, this year as soon as possible, um, along with um, uh, Big Sur support, hopefully very soon. Um, but yeah, it might take a bit longer to get the M1 support. Um, but Dante Virtual Sound Card. Um, yeah, I mean, Dante Virtual Sound Card can run alongside alongside this um, for sure. I One thing I didn't say actually was that um, unlike any previous kind of pro, pro Tools interface, Carbon will work um, as a core audio interface at the same time as Pro Tools. Um, 
so in pre previously, so with HDX or HD native or those previous generations, you could either run Pro Tools or you could run other stuff, but not at the same time. Whereas now you can do both. That's one of the benefits of the, the connection that we're using. Um, so traditionally, you know, you might have used Dante Virtual Sound Card to run Mac applications into Pro Tools or through your Pro Tools hardware. Uh, you don't really need to do that with Carbon. And in fact, what you were listening to this evening with my video playback was running through my Carbon from QuickTime Player. And I've also got Pro Tools running at the same time. Um, and likewise, I've been working with Pro Tools running alongside Ableton Live um, here in the studio, um, both sharing the Carbon interface at the same time. Um, but yeah, I do use Virtual Sound Card quite a lot as well, um, but not so much, not needed so much now. Okay, we have run out of questions again. Um, maybe it'd be useful to show that. Um, how are we doing for time? Yeah, we've got plenty of time. Yeah, I'll show you, I'll do stuff. And if you have anything, please interrupt me. Um, let's just share my screen again. Yeah, okay, so you can probably see um, Pro Tools here. Um, if I go to my um, system preferences, uh, in fact, I won't do that. I'm gonna go to audio MIDI setup, which is the kind of more advanced sound settings page on the Mac. So you can see in here that Pro Tools Carbon shows up at a system level on the Mac in two, twice. So we've got this Pro Tools Carbon Reserve for Pro Tools um, audio engine, and then we've got Pro Tools Carbon IO. And the Carbon IO one is basically free to be used by um, any other application. And it's seeing um, all 28 ins and outs on the box. And so basically, you know, if I run, um, you know, iTunes or Ableton Live, I can just use any of those outputs um, and sync them up. And they'll just get summed. If you're using, if Pro Tools and say Ableton, they're both using the same connections, they just get summed, um, which is awesome. Um, as you can see, I'm also clocking my carbon from my ADA interface, which is um, running on my stuff from over my, my synths into Pro Tools. Um, Any other questions? Um, in fact, I'm actually, um, what I've mainly been doing in here, I've actually, I've just made a video actually, which should be coming out on YouTube in a, in a couple of weeks of how I've been working in this room with all this gear. Um, because I used to use, you know, just down behind me, I've got a Zoom mixer, which is where I used to connect all of this gear. And I used to run have all my gear running through the Zoom mixer so that I could um, just listen to it zero latency. And then if I wanted to record it, I would um, just use the USB audio interface functionality of the Zoom mixer to record into Pro Tools. But you know that meant um, you going into the um, uh, low latency mode actually, which doesn't appear in here because it's carbon. Um, and then managing inputs and muting things and you know, just, as if I was essentially using a con sort of old fashioned console and um, having to manage tape returns and stuff. But now I've basically kind of skipped that middle stage and I'm using, everything's plugged directly into Pro Tools and I've got um, an S1 mixer behind me, which I'm using for real time uh, mix control. And I'm just being able to kind of play music, record it into Pro Tools. I'm recording automation at the same time from, from the S1. Um, and it's great. Um, and I'm mainly using a, like a machiner, uh, which I'm syncing up to Pro Tools over Wi-Fi, which is n nuts. Um, and I'm also using Ableton sometimes as well and just routing stuff uh, across. Um, let's see if we've got any stuff going on in the chat. Um, yeah, uh, 
Okay, so another question about talk back. Um, okay, I'll come back to the question about Matrix Studio and Carbon. Um, but yeah, um, one question came in about talk back. So basically, yeah, there is a simple talk back on the unit. Um, what I'll do is switch across to that view. So I've got a little GoPro on the, trying to manage all my windows here so I can see what I'm doing. So yeah, there is a little talkback mic on the front of the carbon there and a talkback trigger here. And that runs into Pro Tools, um, which is an interesting point actually. Someone did just ask about Matrix Studio, for example, um, which is, you know, the, uh kind of high-end audio interface that you know we tend to partner with hdx and hd native and that gives you this kind of complete switcher and matrix environment uh connectivity and out of pro tools and dante and um uh control room functionality uh, we, and it looks just like pro tools garb in the box but it's you know it's a very different beast it's like its own little world it's got its own um control panel that so it's independent um, which is amazing, you know, you can build just about any setup you need with it. And in fact, I'm using Dante Virtual Sound Card with that on my other system um, to run sound into there and, you know, connecting out to different things, um, speakers. What Carbon aims to do is, is kind of go completely the other way and just make something that's really simple and it's kind of standardized and you plug it in and it works. So all of the control happens inside Pro Tools and on the front panel, you know, so this talk back and these kind of gain controls and stuff, they're all front panel controls. And then you're choosing setup functionality inside Pro Tools. Um, so they're aimed at, you know, one's aimed at just being very straightforward. The other one is aimed at being, you know, a real workhorse machine room type thing that you, if you need um, sort of specialist um, a scenario. Um, in fact, if I go back to Pro Tools here, um, I can't actually remember if I showed this in the video, but if I zoom right in here, uh, this is how you control the carbon settings from inside Pro Tools. Um, you know, you can choose, you've got a main monitor output, or, you know, which is independent on the box, but you can also choose to add some of the other line outs to become monitor outputs as well as, as available speaker sets. Um, you can choose whether the headphones are mirroring your main Pro Tools control room mix or they're independent. Um, you can set talkback um, settings here. And in fact, let me just add another couple of headphone sets here and you'll see that in the Pro Tools IO setup, you know, there's some indication here that these outputs have been allocated to a, another job, so they become unavailable for general routing. So it's quite it's quite clever, you know, bit of interface design that they've done to try and make this, um, you know, what is actually quite a flexible system, make it quite simple. Um, let me see the question. Let me read that question properly from Matthew. Uh, sort images with the Avid Studio and the Avid Carbon and wondered how that works. Uh, what leads what? So the Carbon is effectively another interface, like adding another HDIO. What happens with the HDXP and the Carbon DSP? Okay, so this is a good question. You know, um, essentially they are, so, so Carbon is a separate product on its own. So it is a standalone product. You can't mix it with any other Pro Tools hardware um, you know, so it's an all-in-one self-contained system. The, the DSP and the connectivity is kind of on board in the box and all the IO is in the box. So it's really, it's, that's it, it's dead simple. Whereas, you know, with HDX and the other audio interfaces, they are modular and you connect them together in whatever um, way that you need to. Um, so that's the question is that they don't, they don't mix and match at all. Uh, let's see if anything else is here. Okay, I think that is all the questions we've got.
Um, so we're just coming up to eight o'clock. So um, yeah, so I'm happy to show you anything else if there's any other areas of interest. Um, do you, Eric, do you think we kind of covered all the, the usual questions? Yes, we have. Um, <clears throat> for me, this is a groundbreaking product. Um, there are other products that claim to have zero latency, but <clears throat> for me, it can be a bit of a faff because you, you're having to exit out of Pro Tools and then come back into Pro Tools. It, it, it's quite a convoluted process, whereas what Avid have produced is something very, very simple, an on-off button on the actual track. And behind the scenes, it just finds all the connections and ensures that you have next to zero latency. Uh, the HDX card is without doubt one of the most ubiquitous pieces of technology for audio. And what has made the HDX card what it is, is the fact that it has such great specification with regard to latency. And that's a big part of why people went to HDX. Now we have carbon. I can see a lot of people thinking, wait a minute, doesn't this do the same thing? And it's portable. I can just put it in a, you know, a, in my hand luggage with my laptop and I'm good to go. So um, to Avid, well done on producing a, such a groundbreaking product. And I hope this leads to many, many sales, not to eclipse the HDX, of course, but um, I, I think it has it has merited already its place in the world of audio. Um, Simon, thank you very very much for all your time and efforts. You've you've brought you've put together a very informative presentation, and I hope all the members and hopefully new members out there have found this as enjoyable as myself. Um, it's only left for me to thank everyone and people behind the scenes who made this webinar possible and wish everyone good night and sweet dreams thinking of carbon. <laughs> <laughs> Simon, over to you. Thanks ever so final. much. Okay, to that, we'll bring this webinar to an end. Goodbye. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. Take care.